so I've got to be quick. We don't want no drama. Oh, he's exciting. Whoa, that was fast. There's one. Gotcha. He's going to bite me. All part of the job. Hey there. This is aluminum tubing. You can create and configure a different shape you can imagine. A good day. How's everybody doing? Uh, awesome. Uh, well, are you doing awesome? I'm doing awesome. I feel great. Got a bike ride in, feeling energetic and ready to tackle a little project that I've been wanting to do. Um, we're going to head on over to it right now. As you can see, I've got some uh, expandable foam and I am going to use this foam to actually insulate my blue iguanas. So we're going to have a little bit of a time lapse. We're going to have some fun, but guess what? We're going to answer one of your questions. Thank you to our amazing supporters who help to make this show possible every week. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennan. This week's special shout out goes to Eric Becker. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. Uh, we're gonna get to it first. What I wanna do is I wanna catch these little guys and I wanna do it in a way that I don't wind up running around like a lunatic like I did with the last blue iguana that lived here. I think I caught him, caught up to him somewhere over there. Uh, he's fast and these guys are faster because they're smaller. And there they are right now, just kind of enjoying this warm uh, Christmas weather we have here in Florida. Are you guys excited for Christmas? Are you? I am. I mean, you know, pretty cool. Uh, I'm doing my best Santa uh, impersonation as I'm growing the beard. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna open this up. I'm gonna bring this in here. I stole it from Bush Wildlife Sanctuary. <laughs> Don't tell them. They give me all these containers. I forgot to bring them back, uh, carriers. Anyway, we're gonna take this, we're gonna put it in. I gotta block the cave and catch the lizards. Then we are going to, uh, well, then I'll tell you what we're gonna do next. So let's get in here and let's make sure these little guys, this is like, this is a tough one right there. There we go. Let's make sure we get these little guys before they go in the cave. Otherwise I'm gonna have to, um, uh oh, what happened here? My design is so good. It locks from the inside. Well, hold on, this is a little smudge, a little smegma. Let's get rid of that. Okay. <sighs> Looking good. Okay. There they are, beauties. Two little beauties right there. We gotta get in. We gotta shut this because uh, we don't want these little boogers to go into the cave, which I've hidden here. But I, I forgot one key ingredient, and that ingredient is uh, the actual carrier. So I've got to be quick. You guys keep an eye on these lizards. All right, thank you. There they are. Okay, now let's shut this uh, before one gets out. We don't want no drama. Okay. And again, as you guys know, I do this one-handed because I try and bring you all the excitement here at Camp Cannon. This is uh, just a normal day, only slightly uh, more difficult. Let's go. I'm going to go with the, uh, well, I'm going to go with whatever lizard gets closest to me that I can nab. Hey there, little ones. This is for your own good. We're going to make a little bit of an improvement on this property you're living in. Oh, boy. Always, always exciting. Whoa, that was fast. You're fast. How about that? There's one. Gotcha. He's going to bite me. You might be able to bite me, but maybe not. All right, so we got that one in there. That was kind of a crazy, like, style catch, but we got one. Let's get the other. Now this guy, the male, could be a little bit more difficult. Let him walk up there. Let him walk. Now he's jumping down. He's just, you can see how these guys will bash their faces if, uh, if they're molested too long. So we want to just try and get them to relax, and then I'm going to go for it. All part of the job, people. All part of the job. Hey there. Oh. oh yeah, you're tough. I know you're tough. You're tough. You're tough. Okay. So now we have another problem. I've got to somehow. I got to put you guys down right there. I think you guys can see. I don't know. Huh? I think you can see. That yeah, looks good. And we're gonna do this. He's easy. Does it, my friend? Easy. Does it? Let's just uh, get him in there. Okay. I think we've done it. They're gonna just be a little wacky for a minute. Now I can kind of get to work and do what we need to do. 
Easy, buds. I like to put this kind of right up against something so they don't get any ideas. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the rocks. I'm gonna get that gap foam. And if you look over here, why I want to do this, um, you know, you can kind of look, there's some kind of like gap there. So obviously heat's escaping. So if I put the foam in, it'll really just seal this up nicely. I'm also gonna foam in some of these holes. Some of the holes that you see here, because every once in a while, see these little crevices? The lizards go into these crevices and I don't want them to do that. I want them to go into the opening which I use this hay to kind of seal up, but I want them to go only into one area. And so what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish is to make sure that they always go in their heated shelter. Makes my life easy, makes their life better because they won't get sick and they'll stay warm. So that's what we're uh, on about. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put you down for a second. I'm gonna get the time lapse going and uh, we're gonna get this job finished. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so as you see, I have removed some of the uh, stone and uh, basically we've exposed the corrugated pipe that acts as our cave. And if you look right there, you can see there's a gap. I'm gonna fill that in. We're gonna fill these in and we're gonna start placing back our uh, limestone. Um, but what's cool is I'm gonna try and kind of get foam into all of these grooves because it'll act as an insulator. Uh, then we'll let it dry up and then we'll be able to put the lizards back in. It only takes a little while, a couple hours for it to dry and cure. Um, I don't want this to get on the lizards because you know, it's sticky, it's a pain in the neck. I don't even like when it gets on me. So, but here's how we do it. Uh, you just give it a good shake and what you do is you just start, hold on, this is old foam because this thing used to live um, in another part of the camp. So what I'm gonna do is just get it in there and start spraying. There we go, there we go. This is a half used bottle, so it's coming out pretty slow. But this stuff will expand nicely. So you just kind of get a bead going, it's, it kind of expands and sticks. And we just go ahead and make sure we get this whole thing sealed. This is gonna make it much more warmer in there for them, more efficient, uh, and it's just a way of constantly improving the enclosures. Um, you know, the job doesn't stop when the enclosure is done. You have to see what's happening, how the animals are behaving, and then you have to adjust accordingly. So you're never really done, friends. So with that in mind, you know, it's very important to pay attention to what's going on in your animals' lives, and a good keeper is gonna be somebody that is always adapting and changing, much like nature itself. So we have to just figure things out, find out you know, what materials we can use to make these animals' lives much better. And this is an inexpensive kind of fix, and it's kind of fun too, it's very satisfying. So there you go, we get it all foamed in, and I'm liking that. Uh, that's pretty good, now let's really get the problem is, is like I said, this is a, um, the nozzle had some foam already in it, so it's slow going. But what I'm doing now is just kind of filling in some of these voids that are created by the stacking of the limestone. And so you do that, this expands, and therefore there'll be no more voids and the animals won't be able to kind of get in here where they don't belong. You want them to only go into the cave. That's what you want. But you could just see how these guys enjoy it here. Lots of rock and they are in fact rock iguanas. And these are the blue iguana and they are found uh, if they were, these are blue iguana hybrids. There are no pure blue iguanas in private hands in the United States. Uh, the only blue iguanas you'll see that are pure are actually in zoological institutions, but they are originally a species found in the Cayman Islands. Um, and there are two species of Cyclura in the Cayman Islands. There are the blue iguana, Cyclura lewisii, Nubula lewisii. Uh, and then there are the Cayman Brack iguanas, which are just really cool lizards that we'll be getting some here at the camp. So that'll be cool. 
But again, guys, this is just what I'm doing. It's slow going, so I'm gonna go ahead and foam and I'll get right back with you when it's done. Okay, so we ran out of the Great Stuff foam, but I remembered that I actually had some Aquascape Pro Waterfall foam sealant, and it's basically the same stuff, uh, it's just black. So this is gonna look really cool. I can go around and touch up some of the areas with this stuff, and let's see, let's get it in, there we go. Look at this, just kinda spray it in. It's black, it'll hide the other stuff, and uh, yeah, loving it. So uh, I'm just filling in all the voids, you can see and as we do that it has kind of an adhesive effect on the rocks so the rocks are going to be kind of more stable and um, of course we're also going to have that insulating effect so normally they use this for the waterfalls the rocks behind the waterfalls and what that does is it allows the water to kind of flow around voids so pretty good stuff uh, so let's go ahead and get this down and I'll just put a rock on top of it and that'll be pretty much what I've got to do for the rest of the uh, video here. You can see there's gonna be quite a bit of void. Now this stuff does expand, so that's why I love it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep filling and you guys are gonna keep enjoying that time lapse. Loving it. All right, everybody, it is done. Uh, we've gotten everything uh, underway, situated. I missed a little spot here, but what I was doing is I was taking some of this uh, sand and coquina and you just smash it on there and it'll stick to the foam. And as the foam dries, it then becomes hidden. So that's pretty cool. Um, I still got to do a few more things there. The, the foam does uh, actually expand. So uh, basically, guys, this is what we were on about. We're just getting this thing a little bit more friendly for our reptiles. And uh, you can see now there's no way they can get into those crevices. And I just throw that sand and that works really good. Look at that, pretty cool. So uh, I wound up really liking that Aquascape stuff a lot better. Okay, so it is done. Uh, but before we get to putting the lizards back in, why don't we answer the question that was asked from one of our Patreon supporters. This answer uh, is dedicated to you, Seth. Thanks for asking this question. The question is basically, hey, Kenan, uh, what do you make your lizard enclosures out of? Look at that. I'm doing a lizard enclosure right now. And uh, let's talk about it. Now, there's a couple different things you can use, but here at Camp Kenan, I have been fortunate enough to come across this, um, this is aluminum tubing. Uh, it's usually inch by in, uh, one by one uh, aluminum tubing, and I have something called Esto connectors, uh, which are really great and easy way to assemble this tubing. And you can kind of create and configure any different shape you can imagine. So uh, they make different connectors for all of that. Uh, so this cage, um, I actually got, uh, someone was getting rid of it, didn't want it anymore. So what I do is I build the frame up and then you take, the vinyl coated uh, inch by one, uh, half inch by one vinyl wire that you can get. Uh, you can check out Kluber Tans, that's with a K. Kluber Tans, do a Google search. Uh, they sell wire and uh, it ain't cheap, I could tell you that much. Uh, it's not cheap stuff, but uh, I'll tell you what you should use. Um, I've got some friends coming over from the UK in just a couple of months and we are gonna create the ultimate lizard cage and we're going to use something that they manufacture called knit wire i'm really excited about it and uh, we're going to put it to the test we're going to use it here at camp cannon uh, it's a very fine stainless steel mesh and uh, it is very very strong um, and once you put it over a frame it almost disappears so i'm excited about that pay attention to the channel because that's going to be coming up here in march uh, but in the meantime, I do use this material. It's always been good for me. It cuts down on nose rub. Um, and then I just take the bamboo and I go ahead and just split it in half, as you guys may have seen. And I kind of hide the, uh, the aluminum. Now I've also used wood. 
wood works great. I use pressure treated wood. I still use the same vinyl coated wire. Um, that's just the best way I've found to really make these enclosures. Um, so over here, you can kind of see the other side. I got to get some sand on that, uh, which I will do after this video. Uh, and you know, basically, uh, that's what I do. It's a combination of wood, it's a combination of the vinyl coated wire um, and uh, bamboo and uh, aluminum tube. So that's what I'm using. Um, but wood is good. Uh, starboard is also good. Uh, the plastic composites, things like that, things that don't rot, very good stuff. Uh, and the reptiles do seem to enjoy it. Before we get moving here though, I wanna go ahead and get because I couldn't see as I was working over here. The foam has been expanding. Let's just get some more. See, it's, it's still a little tacky. So I can rub this stuff on it, or I can hide it with, uh, I can actually hide it with more uh, rock, which is probably what I'll do. Um, just hide that foam. Uh, there's a little crevice there, but that's not something I can't get the lizard out of. Uh, doubt they'll even really want to spend too much time in that one as it's kind of exposed. Man. All these rocks, here, this guy, this guy right here. Put them right there and now it's hidden out of the way. What do you say we get these lizards back out in here? Make them happy. So uh, again, thanks Seth. Thanks for uh, asking your question and being a Patreon supporter. Uh, if you guys love the work that I do here, if you enjoy watching these videos and learning about the animals and how we can keep them uh, in a very cool way, uh, go ahead and subscribe. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna open this. Hopefully these guys are gonna run on out. Come on guys, they're such spazoids. I just don't want them to run out the wrong way. There goes one, there goes two. Ah, yeah, see? Like nothing, like nothing happened guys. Just get back to sunbathing and enjoying your lives and I'll leave you alone. But what I'm happy about is the fact that now this entire cave is sealed up nicely. The foam is really doing its job. Uh, again, I usually just take this stuff and I'll jam it right in there. And that does, believe it or not, keep it nice and insulated, keeps the heat in there. And these animals are certainly very happy to be living here. They love their little home. And I hope you guys enjoy it as well. So thanks so much everybody for joining me on this uh, little adventure, creating something new or fixing something new. Remember, like I said earlier, you gotta always be adapting and changing and growing to suit your animal's needs. And that's what I do here at the camp. Look at this camp as one giant experiment that is never ending. Because as we know, the experiment of life is never ending, is it? It just continues. Even after us human beings kick the bucket, evolution keeps trucking along. All right, everybody, I'm Kenan. I'm saying goodbye. And uh, not in a kind of harsh way, more like goodbye. I'll see you again next time. Maybe I need to, I keep feeling my mustache is tickling my bottom lip. It's getting quite large. I should probably trim it. See you guys.